Hello everyone, this is Nimo Zotekrano. Welcome back to another episode of Patrebas. Today I'm here at Banu Auditorium where the Department of Commerce and Economics are organizing the interdepartmental talk. The speakers for today are none other than students of the department themselves. We have Njum Tam Jami and Dibu Zito from Bachelors of Commerce, fifth semester, and from BA Economics, fifth semester, we have Chirino Chase and Miru, who will be speaking on different topics. So without much further ado, let's dive into the session. Well, a very good morning to you all, respected lecturers and all my dear colleagues. It is indeed a privilege to be standing here in this very room, and for that, I would like to thank you for the staff for giving me this wonderful opportunity. And today, we are going to discuss how artificial intelligence has changed the workforce of human resource management and the impact it brought about. So, ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, let us begin our presentation of the baby. What is human resource management? Human resource management, or simply say HRM, is a part of a company that takes care of hiring new employees for a particular job, training them in order to make them capable for a job, and supporting them at the same time in order to achieve the organizational goals and ensure that everyone is happy in the process. And also, HRM is all about finding the right people for the right job and placing them at the right place and at the right time. Next, what is artificial intelligence? When you hear the word artificial intelligence, you might think of movies where robots are taking on with humanity or flying cars or maybe a futuristic city where, you know, there's lots of advanced technologies, but what actually is AI? AI, or also known as artificial intelligence, is simply said the ability of a computer program or a machine to think and learn like human beings. Up next, we are going to discuss the traditional HRM functions. This is before the coming of artificial intelligence. Now, the first one is the recruitment and stuff. And second is the training and development. The third is the performance management. Now, the fourth is the compensation and benefits. Now, we are going to know how AI has impacted HR. So, the first one is the automation of repetitive tasks. In this, the AI helps the employees and the HR manager by performing repetitive tasks for them and allowing them to focus on more other things. The second one is the data-driven decision-making. In this data-driven decision-making, the AI uses the various data available in the organization and accordingly, it is able to make plans for the organization without making any wild guesses. The third is the enhanced employee performance and experience. Now here, the AI enhances the employee experiences by providing new information to, by providing information to new employees and verifying their doubts with related to HR problems or other organizational matter. An example of this is chatbots. Chatbots, chatbots are being used widely in corporate roles in order to verify doubts of new employees. With this, it helps to give various information and output and that is how it is able to uh, process those information and work accordingly. The fourth is the predictive analysis. Now, AI will use the present and the past data in order to analyze data and accordingly it will make plans instead of just waiting for the future. Now, we are going to know the AI tools used in human resource management. So what are the various AI tools used in human resource management? The first one is the recruitment and talent, recruitment and talent acquisition. The second one is the onboarding and training. The third is the employee engagement and feedback. The fourth is the performance analysis. Now, what is the potential of AI in the future? Well, the potential of AI in human resource management is that it will help the employee develop, meaning that it will help in developing the skills and it will enable the employees not to depend on HR because all the tasks mostly will be done by AI. And it also 
to use them in diversity and inclusion in many levels. Starting from the point of the recruitment process, AI will be screening off the inquiry. So there will be no space for biasness and enhanced people give more diversity. And the third is that it will give, uh, there will be less work for both the HR and the employees because the hard works or say the repeated works will all be done by the AI. So it will give more time to the employees and HR to focus on other things. And the fourth is the workplace safety. Since they will be appreciated uh, of the work they will do, so they will feel a sense of loneliness and that's how they will get a workplace safety. How AI is beneficial in human resource management. It is going to be crucial for human resource management. It is going to be crucial for HR in future because with the ongoing advancement in technology, AI is going to be in effect very soon. So it is going to be crucial for HR in the future and it is also going to enhance fairness and employee experiences and there will be no impartiality and biasness because all because the screening will be done by the AI based on the skills talent required by the organization. And AI is going to help both the organization and the employees grow. And with that, I'll make a complete representation. Thank you. Thank you. 
minus. So when there is this fixed exchange rate, the companies plan their export and imports confidently uh, without worrying about the prices uh, that's changing in the economy. On to the next slide, which is on the importance of exchange rate. So there are two points, which is uh, international trade and macroeconomic stability. So the first one, international trade. International trade is referred to the exchange or threat of goods and services uh, between different nations. It helps to turn the value of our currency to another currency. It also helps to turn the value of appreciate and depreciate. Appreciate generally means uh, when the money value of our country is increasing and depreciate means when the money value of our country is decreasing. Now to the second point, macroeconomic stability. So this refers to the overall condition of the economy. Uh, it focuses on the price stability and full employment. So when I say price stability, this, uh, this means keeping the inflation in check. And macroeconomic stability also focuses on the full employment. It strives for full employment because a uh, high level of unemployment can lead to wasted resources. Now to the next topic which is on the impacts of the exchange rate. So it has significant impacts on various economic business and individual such as on international trade. So this exchange rate directly affects the competitiveness of import and export. Now the second point which is on the consumer purchasing power. So exchange rate affects the consumer purchasing power. Uh, say a stronger currency domestic can allow you to buy more of the foreign goods. Why a weaker currency can limit purchasing power? The next point is on the economic instability. So exchange rate can influence political and social hardship. Rapid currency depreciation can lead to economic hardship. Now moving on to the trends and challenges of exchange rate. So um, trends is something that is changing and evolving. Since we are living in a globalized world, it has led to better currency exchange activity. Now to the second point, which is on cryptocurrencies. So cryptocurrencies are assets that are only used for electronic transactions. Now to the challenges of the exchange rate, which the first point is on the uncertainty, the second one is on the cryptocurrency's impact. Because of the increasing and popularity and volatile of cryptocurrencies may lead to new complexities into the foreign exchange market. Uh, concluding with my presentation is important to understand what is exchange rate and how they work like different exchange rate systems such as fixed and floating. Beware of the market sentiments like the supply and demand. Familiarize yourself with commonly traded currency like USD, Euro. Exchange rates are subject to ongoing changes and developments. Make a habit of staying updated regularly through financial news updates. Thank you. Now we have my news today with the company department of our fifth semester. She will be presenting to us on the topic of consumers know your rights. Very good morning to everyone. Thank you. Everyone in this room, we are all 
country's economic system because we consumers, we create demand. And then without the demand, there won't be any production. The you know, manufacturers, they won't have any reason for production. So with the increase in demand and production, there will be more income and so we are boosting the Indian country's economic system. So let us see some of the forms where the uh, consumers will be used. The first one is adulteration. So what is adulteration? It means mixing and substituting of undesirable substances in food products that can harm the health of the consumers. The next one is the false advertising. As you can see in this uh, image here, right here uh, the expectation, this one is the advertisement, and the reality is the one, the product which we, uh, which we get. So, uh, what, whatever is being revealed, whatever is seen in the advertisement, they're not entirely true. And so, we buyers will only drawn to purchase these uh, products just because of the way it's being displayed in the advertisement. It is very attractive that we tend to purchase those products. The next one is duplication. Okay, so this is one very common form of exploitation. Uh, as we see in this image, like if we're in a hurry or if we were very careless, we're in no position to differentiate the actual product, the original one, and then the fake one. The next one is high price. Traders take in charge of price higher than the price presented in the market because of the urgency of the market. So these uh, sellers and traders, they will charge higher price than the MRP. Just because there is only one product in the market, the consumers will have no choice but to purchase them. So with that advantage, they raise the price. Moving on to consumer rights. So Consumer Protection Act 2019. It helps us to be protected against any form of unfair trade practices. And also it helps us to make the right choices and uh, you know, help us assist us in making complaints. The first right we have is right to safety. So this is right to give the consumers the right to be protected against any kind of marketing that is harmful to our life as well as to our product. The next one is right to choose. I think many of us will practice this right. When we go for shopping, we don't usually you know, go to one shop and then purchase it from there. We go to different shops and then we compare the quality of the products, the price especially. And then uh, we go for the one with the least price. So this right it gives uh, consumers access to a variety of goods and services at a competitive price, that is the fair price. And then we have the freedom, we have the right to choose whatever we like. The next right is right to be informed. The right to be informed about the quality, quantity, purity, standard, and price of the product. Uh, this right to be given the true facts and true information about the products or services. And we consumers, as the consumer, we should insist on getting all the information about the products and services before we purchase them so that we can be safe from unfair trade practices. So, um, the Consumer Protection Act 2019 it laid down three paragraphs judicial mechanism for um, redressal of consumer business. At the, at the district level, we have the district commission. At the state level, we have the state commission. And at the national level, we have the national commission. Let us discuss some of the case studies. So this case study it is about paying more than the MRP. Uh, it has become very common to charge more than the MRP in places like theaters, uh, restaurants, you know, even in our locality here, just I mean around here, many retailers and sellers they are costing, costing more than the MRP. So you know, we happen to see it, but we just tend to ignore it. So in this case, Mr. Kona from Andhra Pradesh did ignore it when uh, Service for they charge him 40 rupees for just a water bottle for the MRP is 20 rupees. So he filed again a case against the district commission and then he supported his claim with the bill. So court decision, the court decided in favor of Mr. Honda and said that such practice is not justified just because it is very common. The next case is between this Segal School of Competition versus Dalgar City. So as to then, Dr. Singh, he was asked to pay a lump sum of rupees of 18,734 for coaching of medical entrance examination for the next two years. So the amount he was paid in complete two installments. However, like in the midway, the student realized he noticed that the 
quality of the coaching center, it was not up to mark, it was not up to this satisfaction. So he filed that case. I mean, uh, he, uh, he stole for refund, but uh, later on, the school, the institute, they rejected the, his request. He started two case studies on the violation of the rights. And as we've got the conclusion now, look, it is very important for us consumers to know our rights and responsibilities. So to, to, by your understanding and knowing with our rights and responsibilities, we will know when to fight or when our rights are being violated and when to fight for what actions to take to avoid it. And in conclusion, we should start practicing our rights and responsibilities and fight against unfair trade abuses. Thank you. Now, let us all hear from our last presenter, Ms. Shulibina Chesi from the Department of Economics. Please, Mr. Sir, I the people will be on the investment. Very good morning to all the students of this and all my fellow ladies present here. Well, my name is Shulibina Chesi from the Economics Department this semester, and I will be presenting on the topic of investment. So, starting with the investment, what is investment? Investment refers to the act of allocating our time, money, resources into an asset or behavior with the expectation of generating an income of in the future. Um, it involves uh, purchasing assets like stocks, bonds, or various other assets, uh, or starting a business uh, with the aim of achieving our wealth over time. Uh, investment can vary in risk or Return. Uh, therefore, an individual may uh, therefore an individual may an investment uh, decision based on their financial goals or risk tolerance. Up next, we have uh, the importance of investment. So, uh, under importance of investment, we have wealth growth, financial security, income generation, tax benefits. And achieving financial goals and financial freedom. So, so what is wealth growth? Wealth growth. What is the importance of wealth growth investment? So, wealth growth is closely linked uh, investment as it preserves the purchasing power of money. Uh, here, we have reduced fluctuations in the economy with the help of the purchasing power of money in our hands. We will be able to fight against inflation in the overall financial uh, fluctuations in the economy. Next, we have. Financial security. So your financial security is a uh, fundamental prerequisite for a successful investment. Uh, why? Because uh, when we when we have enough financial uh, security in our hands, uh, whenever there is short-term or long-term fluctuations in the economy, in the financial market, with the availability of uh, the availability of uh, the financial financial uh, financial asset. We will be able to invest more than there is fluctuations in the short term or long term in the economy. Next, we have uh, income generation. So, income generation uh, basically means uh, the multiple income sources that we get when, uh, when we invest in various kinds of assets. Next, we have uh, tax benefits. So, here, tax benefits are crucial for investment as they can significantly impact our financial goals. Tax benefit simply means the reduction in the uh, taxation, uh, reduction in our tax payments. When there is a uh, reduction in, uh, in our tax payment, our savings increases. And when there is an increase in our savings, we can invest in more appearances. So this is all about tax benefit. Next, we have achieving financial goals and financial freedom. So what is achieving financial goals and financial freedom? So achieving financial goals means uh, reduction in our debts and increasing our savings to meet the emergency funds and other economic conditions that arise in the future. So uh, next we have the types of investment. And under types of investment, we have fixed deposits, recurring deposits, mutual funds, and stocks and bonds. So what is fixed deposits? Uh, fixed deposits is a financial investment where we deposit a lump sum of our money with a bank or any kind of financial institution. So here we be deposit a lump sum of money into a, uh, into a bank or any kind of, uh, any kind of financial institution. Uh, we deposit with a predetermined period 
create uh, a lot of different things in history. Uh, and when we deposit our money in any kind of financial banks, in this case, deposit, we cannot enjoy for the future GDP. So, this fixed deposit is a safe kind of investment for you in enjoy for a low risk investment. And next, we have the recurring deposit. So, the recurring deposit uh, is a type of savings scheme. Uh, Savings schemes offered by banks or financial institution. Here in this uh, recurring deposit, uh, we can deposit our money in uh, regular intervals, like say uh, monthly, say in a year, uh, our recurring deposit, say in a year, we deposit our money monthly wise like from January to December. Like December is a maturity date, and this recurring deposit is uh, that kind of investment for investment period. helps us uh, to, uh, to keep ourselves uh, to invest uh, consistently and to be uh, patient and to discipline ourselves while we invest in the uh, values or any kind of other conditions. So the third point we have is mutual funds. So in this mutual funds, what is mutual funds? Mutual funds is uh, investment vehicles that pulls money from multiple industries to invest in many assets like stocks, bonds, and many other kinds of assets. Here in this mutual fund, there is a professional fund manager as well as uh, mobiles or any kind of uh, experienced investors. So a mobiles or uh, an experienced investor can invest through this professional fund manager and this professional fund manager will take the charge of investing and the investment that he or she made, the return of it and the professional fund manager gets will be uh, divided between the mobiles or any kind of experienced investor along with this professional fund manager. So this is all about mutual funds. And next we have stocks and bonds. So what is stocks and bonds? Stocks represent a fractional ownership of a company that an individual owns while investing. Whereas on the other hand, bonds uh, represent a fixed income interest that represents a loan uh, made by a made by the investor to a borrower, with uh, certain criteria such as uh, issuing certificates or uh, bonds between the investor and the borrower. Uh, next, we have what is risk. So, well, while investing, it's very important for us to know about risk. So, what is risk? Risk in the context of investment refers to the possibility of losing some or all of our investment capital uh, or not. market volatility, economic downturns, poor performances of individual assets, and changes in interest rate in the borders. Uh, under risk, we also have some types of risk. So the first one, we have market risk. So what is market risk? This is the risk of losing our money whenever there is fluctuations in the overall financial market. And uh, it includes factors such as market volatility and general economic uh, conditions such as multiple issues or recession. This market risk, it cannot be prevented. However, it can be managed or mitigated through the help of various strategies such as uh, dollar cost averaging, uh, dollar cost averaging and many other more strategies involved. Next, we have credit risk. So here, credit risk is associated uh, with the potential for Bond issuers or borrowers to, you know, uh, to default on their obligations. Next, we have liquidity risk. So here, liquidity risk is the difficulty of buying and selling assets, like uh, like non-liquidity assets. Uh, it becomes difficult to trade when the assets is not liquid, such as uh, land, buildings, etc. And next, we have currency risk. So uh, for currency risk. Uh, when there is uh, changes in the exchange rate, it affects, it affects the value of the investment uh, where an investor is investing in other countries. For example, uh, an individual from one country investing in another country, and when the uh, exchange rate of the other country increases, it ultimately affects the value of the investment that an investor is making in the country. So this is all about the currency risk. And next we have 
have risk tolerance. So, uh, what is risk tolerance? In a perfect world, every investment would get a return and we would never lose any money. But uh, the problem is, in real life, risk is unpredictable. Uh, investment losses are always possible, so are things. Whether you are a high risk stakeholder, a high risk taker, or you are very conservative with your money, uh, it's possible to build an investment risk tolerance. The amount of financial risk you are comfortable taking uh, while investing, market volatility is unavoidable, and investment values are constantly increased. It is triggered by potential of political news and spread of the economy and global prices such as. Next we have, uh, how do we manage risk while investing? So, effective risk management uh, involves around diversification, strategic asset allocation, understanding your personal risk tolerance, and employing tools such as dollar cost averaging, maintaining an emergency fund, and provide uh, and critically rebalancing your portfolio uh, to align with your objectives. Next, we have best ways for me to invest as a college students. Uh, oftentimes, we think that uh, investment is reserved only for the wealthy, but it is absolutely not like that. Uh, be it the wealthy or the common people or the students you and I, uh, uh, we should consider how we how we can use uh, how we can use investing to create and secure our financial future. Uh, financial future before before we start creating our career. Some of the basic steps to get started uh, investments are setting our financial goals, establishing an emergency funds, creating our budget, diversifying our investment, educating ourselves, investing regularly, staying informed, re uh, reviewing the expectations, and so on. Now concluding with my Presentation. Investment serves as a means to find inspiration and uh, achieving various financial goals. Thus, effective investment, as, we, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it requires careful planning, diversification, and managing our personal risk tolerance. And whether you're saving for retirement, funding education, or growing personal wealth, investment plays a crucial role in achieving this. Additionally, on a broader perspective, investments stimulate economic growth, create jobs, and drive innovative ideas for the world of the society. Thank you. What was the main objective behind organizing this departmental talk? The object for uh, today's interdepartmental talk is all about uh, knowledge sharing. Our students uh, uh, from the final years of all the undergraduates, uh, social sciences, uh, mass communication and commerce, we come together annually in, uh, annually for a talk whereby our students, two, two departments, they presented the knowledge that they have acquired and uh, they go for sharing the knowledge that they have acquired and shared with the other students as they prepare for their um, uh, exams and all that is uh, as they venture out beyond uh, the college that is once they graduate how they will pursue uh, so the talk is mainly about that thank you ma'am do you think today's session is beneficial or productive for you Yes, I should say that today's uh, session was beneficial and productive because I'm sure every student had learned a lot about AI, consumer rights, and investment, and exchange rates. So there's a lot of uh, information to get to know about today's world, what is going on. So I, I should say that it's a very productive session today. Uh, adding to this point, it is a platform where the students and the presenter have a discussion. And so, yeah, in that way, we get to exchange information enhance our knowledge and yeah it was a really productive session thank you uh yes i think today's talk was uh, beneficial and i think it was really uh, informative because um as a student from the economics department i got to also engage with other departments the students and their knowledge on how they are coming up with different ideas and different uh, knowledge so yeah today's talk we had uh, several topics and from that we were able to uh, grasp 
some ideas from other departments and uh, we also hope and believe that they have also gained some knowledge from our department so it was a really uh, good um, interdepartmental talk so yeah it was uh, beneficial uh, for me personally and as far as i know it will be very uh, i believe that it is also beneficial to others so, yeah, yeah thank you uh, yeah, it was very beneficial and productive for me. Uh, after attending this program, uh, I really comes to lots of knowledge about the consumer rights and uh, responsibility investment related to the topic th uh, which they have presented. So uh, it was really productive for me. I will say it really was my confidence and I also get an idea like how they present it. It will also very beneficial for me to when I was just yeah, when I was just getting fifth semester. So it was very uh, productive for me. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, that's all for today. Stay tuned for more updates.